It's Bourbonite. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. And this is Dixon. And Dixon, what is this? That is confiscated. Confiscated. Okay. Sarah and I have not had this yet. Nope. This is our bottle that we brought. We're gonna uncork it, but you know, imagine this, Dixon already had a bottle open. So, <laughs> a little different format for uncorking. Yeah. But uh, well, so, we're not gonna fight him. We're gonna let him pour yeah. us his if he <laughs> exactly. wants to. So just to give the lowdown, it's 96.4 proof, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. But what else can you tell us about it? Confiscated is a blend of five, nine, 10, and 12 year old distillates um, that took me a long time to put together, both kind of based on um, what, what the plan was with this, but also kind of working a little bit outside of my normal comfort zone, so to speak. So then what I started doing was, was working with different lots of barrels, four different distillates, four different ages, four different mash bills, but there are actually a total of nine different lots uh, represented. So some of the same distillate for, with the same age, but you know, three and four months apart on uh, date of distillation. So okay. um, I got a passing grade on uh, fifth grade math, but that's about as. Uh, yeah, I was promised no math in the Sun <laughs> I know, I'm and like, then you're talking about lots, and you're talking yeah, about mash, well, four so mash bills. Then there's, there's a lot of chicken scratch on paper that, uh, <laughs> that, that that turned into this one, and it's it's also it's the first whiskey I've ever been a part of, you know, in the sub 100 proof point, mm -hmm. and and that was a real challenge because I don't like to want to or really have any interest in creating a, a whiskey a bourbon that that has no character no yeah. substance nothing to it and I, I i don't mean that in a bad way like I, people do it you know but there's nothing wrong with the term smooth mild easy to drink you know but a lot of times that those ideas are often you know around bourbon that has been taken into the, you know, the 90 proof point range and there's no real finish and there's no, you know, and and and, and so the, the real struggle was to try to target a lower proof point because of trying to make a different iteration that worked differently than some of the other stuff we do, but that also had, still had structure and still had balance and still had real character and still, you know. Well, the nose is, has some complexity. Yeah, let's, let's, Absolutely. let's talk about that. Cause we always like to talk about the nose first before we take the first sip. Gotta say I'm a little nervous giving nosy notes and in front of the... No, you should just, as soon as he says something wrong. There, no, there's not a, <laughs> no, I didn't put, I didn't any put that, that in there. I didn't put any of that in uh, my whiskey. I, I'm the worst to, uh, you know, notes is a hard thing to do. Notes is a challenging thing to do. And, and when I do whiskey, it's more about, do I like what's going on here? I'm not a big fan of feeling like I've got to put my finger on exactly sure. what it is. I'm or... so glad that you said that because I'm yeah. having such a hard time putting my <laughs> finger on exactly what this is. And I don't know, I'm kind of getting like maybe a mixture of clove and cinnamon kind of on the on the nose. I honestly don't even know. It's so complex that maybe I'm some... like having a hard time picking anything out in An particular. Ap apple peel? I, I don't know. I'm just gonna start throwing things out there. Something sticks. <laughs> I don't think that's how this works. <laughs> no? You, like palettes work in different ways. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, I've, I've worked on, you know, private barrel selections with people who can select beautiful, fabulous, you know, barrels um, that, you know, they just, they just mark an X or a check mark. You know what I mean? And, oh, and have right. no interest right. and couldn't care any less. Yeah. Um, I have another friend who has this, this amazing palette and this amazing ability to taste things, but we're very similar in it. It, it almost takes like the whatever you taste or smell, it's all it's like a sensory that takes you like triggers a memory. Like That's you know, how you I taste am. things, and yeah. it's like oh, this reminds me of the way the mountain cabin that we stayed in that time. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. it's right. just it's like all of a sudden you're like oh Absolutely. my gosh, that takes me to that place or it takes me to that. Yeah. And then there are the people that, that are really remarkable about saying, 
this I get a note of blood orange and there's a touch of cayenne and there's a little anise and you know and 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 so I'm always fascinated to, yeah. to like just talk to people about what they're getting with us I think we get lucky sometimes and we get on a streak where you know I'll say something or Sarah will say something and the other one will be like oh my god yes that yeah. but then there's always but the there's other times where we're like what mm, it's I like it but what is what is what it? is that uh, yeah. you know a lot of times we say after you have a drink and you can go back and nose it, and you can pick up some things sure. from the taste. Sure, so sure, let's sure. go ahead and uh, dive into oh, it. Confiscated. Cheers. cheers. Wow. And I would, if blind tasting, I wouldn't ooh. say that was under a hundred. No, it's got the spice. It has, but a, in a really good way. And all over, <laughs> as uh, <laughs> might not be used to our little descriptors, tongue tingle, as we say, a little tongue punch there. Yeah, all all over, not located one part of the tongue. Mm -hmm. Which I'm really liking. And we'll say this, because we've never done an uncorking with anyone involved in the brand. But you have our our, our honest uh, th uh, statement here that if we think it sucks, we'll tell them. We'll tell them. We'll be like, hey. But that's not, we will. That's not happening. <laughs> I, I Luckily, would, I would be highly disappointed <laughs> if we didn't. If you thought it sucked and you didn't say so. <laughs> there are whiskeys that I don't like and that people love. Sure. And there are, there are fabulous whiskeys that just don't suit me. And there are some whiskeys that people make fun of and rip and, and, and tear down all the time that I think are beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think it's really important to understand that people have different palates. And oh, people sure. have yeah. different things they enjoy. And people have different appreciations of different whiskeys. And That's the beauty of it. I have zero problem mm -hmm. with somebody saying, I don't like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Understand, no big deal. I'll tell you right but now, this does not suck. <laughs> luckily, this does not suck. So yeah. we don't. <laughs> it has some really amazing suck. spice going on, but it's like. Yeah. It's also really balanced, so that's where I get that like the spice is making me feel like I'm getting a nice little hug. So well, Kentucky it's hug. Putting yeah. me around, like I feel like I'm drinking something that's around 100 proof. Well, 110. Um, but I don't feel like I've lost the flavor mm -hmm. at all. Like I, I would like no. tell you, you know, like I. I've never been very good at blending from a, oh, I'm getting this note or I'm picking up this note and I want to exaggerate it or accentuate it sure. or whatever. And and part of, you know, part of my whole, the way I've done things, which is my own way, which is a very unique way, which mm -hmm. doesn't make sense to a whole lot of people. And for good or bad, it's just my way, is, is really focusing on specifically where you feel it mm -hmm. when you taste it. Um, and, and my palate is, is such that when it gets to certain portions of the palate, uh, those little alarm bells go off and they say, you know, run away, run away, run away, do something else, mm -hmm. you know? And I like complexity on the palate, but I like it from the tip of your tongue in the front to the finish in the back. Mm -hmm. But I like it down the middle of the palate. And I mm -hmm. don't like it too far on the extremities where things yeah. start to get green and start to get bitter and start mm -hmm. to get tannic and, mm -hmm. and whatever. Yeah. So the introduction, and really it was it was the introduction of the second lot of this, this this younger stuff, which is in my opinion, pound for pound, the best stuff that's in this blend, uh, was what kind of drove it back, you know, it got a little bit on the front. But the other thing that um, struck me about this blend was there's this great, and I, so here I'm totally like going back on what I said, but these are the things that it reminded me of. There's a citrus note in the middle of this, like an mm -hmm. orange, like, like orange. It goes from kind of orange to like a cayenne spice. Like that's the mm -hmm. way I followed it. And then you worked in some of those neat kind of licorice notes or something like that. But that, that was what I was getting. But there was complexity there. Mm -hmm. Even at 90, you know, whatever it is, 96.4, I forget all the time. But, <laughs> like it, we it's- are 96.4, you are correct, sir. Yeah, it, it drinks like a full flavored. It, it really does. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it doesn't drink like a barrel proof bourbon. It's not a barrel proof bourbon, but it, it doesn't drink like a 90 proof kind of washed right. out uh -huh. light. I think it's super interesting how it's achieving that. Like it's not barrel proof, but it's not 90 proof. And it, it comes off a little higher than it is, but I think not in the way that it feels like it burns like a higher proof bourbon, but Correct. in the way that it feels like you're getting all that flavor as it was yeah. intended and less cut down. And I think it's like really hitting just like right on the nose. I feel like if I was blinded with this, I would put it 
around the Russell's Reserve. It's really Reserve not to say that or... that would blind you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how they if make this, it anymore. If this was moonshine, I became blind. Uh, I put it around like uh, Russell's Reserve at 100, 110, 110 or uh, Pikesville Rye 110, you know, which I, I enjoy being in that range. Yeah, so great. I think it's really impressive that it's that it's that proof, but it's giving off those characteristics. I'll take it. I mean, because that's that's my sweet spot. That's right. where you know. That's where I like to drink. Mm -hmm. um, that's where. That's where I can safely drink for the entire evening. So I'm curious about where the name Confiscated comes from. Working on what what kind of a new iteration under this brand would be. I thought, and and I you know was was more of a approachable proof. You know, a lower proof. Um, so that we kind of have something that that operates in the barrel proof, you know, mm -hmm. space. Something for everybody. And something that was a little. And 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 I, I don't. I, I appreciate you saying that, but it, and I, but I realize that at the price point that this is at, you know, this is still in my mind, um, in that special occasion thing. You know, I mean, I, I don't. I, I, certainly not lost on. On me that you know, 120 bucks is is not what somebody goes and drops for a bottle that they're going to, you know, crack open on, and, you know, and, and polish off by the end of the week. Like right. I, you know, totally not lost on me. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and, and my, my real responsibility is the liquid that's in the bottle. Right. I mean, that's, that's, that's all I, I, I don't, I don't buy the corks. I don't buy the glass. I don't, I'm not responsible for having the labels printed. I'm not, you know, yeah. I, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I, you know, my, my job is to put stuff together to go in the bottle and, the, mar the the team like they were really kind of struggling to figure out what to what to call this. So total like standing in the shower one morning moment like you know getting ready for my day and thinking through oh, this stuff knows. and you know and how it's like when best ideas right? right in the shower totally <laughs> and totally I will. And I guess I was kind of thinking about the way that you know that, that, that we had you know the story and, and what we were doing and, and basically that batch one batch two batch eight batch nine whatever you know was was really the the rebirth the, the kind of taking an old brand and and it was the, the way we were doing it was was the future of the brand and thinking about the story and my family story and the story of my family's distillery there was another kind of story to tell which was the end of the brand and the the the, the barrels that when when they were forced to cease production were seized or confiscated by the federal government and taken and, and that led to the great story about you know how they you know, they burned the right. rick houses and all that stuff but uh, you didn't use but, air quotes uh, burned and yes, burned burn, and mysteriously <laughs> burned uh, <laughs> but i mean that was really the idea was like uh confiscated is kind of this like tribute not necessarily in, not in flavor profile or whatever but mm -hmm. kind of like it's another part of the story is the, yeah. the you know and and, I love and that. so that you know the the confiscated name like it just kind of i was like yeah stolen uh you know but no, so there's already a stolen whiskey out there. Yeah. yeah and then all of a sudden i was <laughs> like yeah, it's confiscated, confiscated. That's kind of cool. If, if our viewers aren't familiar, Dixon is a, we'll see, let me rephrase that. Your great great grandfather. That's correct. Was uh, Charles Deadman, if I'm remembering right. You right on time. Boom. Chad's passing the quiz. <laughs> Channeling that article uh, was the one who uh, created the uh, Al brand, and that was the most popular brand of others, correct? From what I understand, he also did a lot of contract distilling. Mm -hmm. I've seen one empty bottle of, or a couple empty bottles of Kentucky Owl, but I've, I've actually tasted and seen more bottles of brands that on the back label listed, you know, distilled Distil at the CM mm -hmm. Deadman Distillery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. That's pretty cool. Yes. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a super interesting story and your family's history and how things were confiscated. And then, um, cause uh, you know, we saw you talk a couple years, probably about three years ago now, when you're telling this story. Again, I'm channeling that now. About <laughs> how, uh, how your great-great-grandfather was petitioning the government to get an insurance policy on these barrels. And they were like, it's in the government's hands. Don't even worry about it. And then they say, oopsie, it burnt down. <laughs> and then, of course, that was prohibition. And the end of prohibition, uh, just weren't able to bounce back. But in 
2014, as you said, you resurrected your your family's legacy with this brand, and we're thankful that you have. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a it's a super interesting story. And but as far as this lovely bottle right here, and yes. it is a beautiful bottle. Speaking I've always, of being thankful, I'm so thankful for the gorgeous <laughs> art on yeah. this label. It's like I've my always, favorite art. So we always come down to at the end of our uncorkings to a recommend or not. Uh, Price-wise, as Dixon said, it's around $120, so it is. it does fall in that more of a special occasion. I do have to say, at the time of this filming, yesterday was my birthday. It's this man's birthday in a few days, so we're, we're surrounded by special occasions. This is something that I would happily break out for it. $120, also as you said, isn't something that you're just going to always pop down and, and go through the bottle. So the recommend or not comes with that caveat, and I know it's not in everyone's uh, budget, so that is something to take into consideration. But the juice inside to the flavor profile and uh, the finish that this has and the complexity of it. And I know people can be like, well, he's sitting right next to the guy. Of course he's going to recommend it. Like I said. We'll figure out a way to put this into a blind taste test later so that yeah. you guys actually believe us. But I, Absolutely. But I have say, recommend. I agree. I've paid more for bottles that I've been sorely disappointed in. Same. So knowing that that this is at 120 when there's a lot more expensive out there as well, um, I'd be happy to buy this again. Okay. I think it's delicious Do and I'm the excited. Official... Oh. Boom. That's, you that's what we do. It's our thing. I, uh, it's our thing. I'm excited to finish this. <laughs> Absolutely. And then finish this. And then, hey, no. <laughs> We're going to keep this around. Special occasions. Uh, well, thanks, Dick Dixon. We appreciate you That's coming on. My pleasure. Thank and you uh, this, you know, was a, like I said, a completely different experience um, talking about and critiquing a, a, a bottle with the person who had everything to do with it. But uh, I'm only sweating a little. Yeah. I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> Phew, we made it. It's hot in here. We made it. <laughs> oh, all these lights. Yeah, the lights are, lights are hot. Uh, but no, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Very thank cool. You. I'm actually getting ready to do go do a tasting. And uh, dinner. Also for my birthday. At uh, the Beaumont Inn. We're here at the Beaumont Inn, which, you know, you've heard us talk about before, especially in our live episodes, how it's a destination that you definitely want to hit. But we'll say it again, Beaumont Inn, um, you need to be there. Bo can, can Beaumont Inn get a recommend? Recommend. <laughs> Double recommend. We keep coming that? back. Yeah, keep coming back. It's our delicious. second year here for birthday. I love it. Birthday celebration. So. Well, that'll do it for us. Uh, guys, if you're new here to the channel and you like what we're bringing here to the table, you can hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. You give us a thumbs up if you feel like we earned it. You can hit that bell notification if you want to get notified when we put all our, out our episodes is how you talk. That's how you say it. Also, we want to let you know about our home on the internet for our merch, uh, glasses, uh, apparel, and so forth. It's whiskeyambitions.com. You can check that out for everything. If you're whiskey ambitious, whiskeyambitions.com. If you want to become a patron, it's patreon.com slash it's bourbon night, and you can join in our bourbon loving community. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also find all our favorite things for our bourbon night. It's our Amazon influencer page, amazon.com slash shop slash it's bourbon night. And where's the last place they can find us, Chad? Lastly, you can follow us on all the social medias at it's bourbon night. And if they would like to follow you and your brand, well, there's an at Kentucky Owl, and and I am at the old owl. If mm -hmm. if you have any interest in seeing the silly things that I do, <laughs> you do. That's that's you on do. the uh, that's on the Instagrams, right? That's right. Yep. Cool. All right. Very good. Well, thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Thanks, Dixon. Thank you all. All right. Until next time, drink more bourbon. This is a thinker, and I love that about it, that I can't just completely drill down and be like, that's what that is.